Hey everybody, welcome back to Cascadia Dispatch, prepping for non-preppers. I'm Casey, and today we are going to talk about the lockdowns and the shutdowns that are being rumored and talked about over the last 24 to 48 hours that could start anytime between now, Monday, possibly January. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind just hitting the like button and the subscribe button down below, we'd really appreciate it. Helps get the videos out to more people, lets YouTube know that they should share it with other people, and hopefully they will enjoy it as much as you do. So over the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of conversation about the spikes and increases in COVID cases and hospitalizations all around the country in various states and cities and regions. So as a result of these spikes, a lot of cities and states are changing their plans around reopenings and uh, tightening down restrictions. They're either adding more restrictions or they're not loosing restrictions. And in some cases, like in Oregon, we are being put on pause in most counties, which actually means we're rolling back to smaller numbers of people, less um, access to restaurants and businesses, and it's possible that, that could even tighten up further if cases don't turn around their trajectory. Yesterday, President-elect Biden's COVID chairperson was on a streaming call, I believe it was on Yahoo, and was asked how he felt about lockdowns and how they could handle the pandemic, and he said that he felt that the country was financially able to handle locking down for four plus weeks. He said four to six, I believe. Um, six is kind of the number that's being floated about, but locking down the country for four to six weeks and financially reimbursing people for either lost wages or providing unemployment, supporting businesses. It'd be a part of a whole huge aid package that would come through, but essentially everyone would be in a stay at home order for between four to six weeks. Since some states and cities and counties are rolling back now, and it's possible that there could be some sort of a national restriction that would come in January, now is a really good time to jump in, and if you haven't started prepping, to start preparing for what that could look like, uh, very similarly to what happened in March and over the summer. And if you already were preparing because you had to deal with quarantines and things uh, in March and over the summer, depending on which state and city you lived in as to whether or not you were locked down in March or whether you were locked down more toward the summer, um, you've probably already gone down this path, but now is a good time to make sure that you have re-upped and re-strategized for what could be an even longer time of lockdown or quarantine. So I'm gonna tell you six things that I think you should do right now to prepare for either a small lockdown in your area or what could be a national lockdown in January. Part of the reason to prepare now is you do have some time in the uh, originally in the spring and summer the lockdowns and restrictions kind of happened out of the blue. The stay-at-home orders, you had maybe 24 hours, 48 hours notice. Now we have a little bit more time. Hopefully you've been preparing a little bit over the last several months, but we know that potentially if there is something in January, we have two to three months to actually kind of prepare for that. And now would be the time to get started so you don't end up at the grocery store or whatever store you're at and the shelves are completely bare because everyone's panic buying and you know better than to panic buy. We don't panic buy, we buy ahead of time. That's the whole point. So the first tip is to start meal planning. If you're gonna be in some sort of a stay at home order or something for several weeks, I did this in March when we in Oregon were gonna be under a two week stay at home order, lockdown, whatever you wanna call it. So we had food because we've been preparing for the Cascadia earthquake and other natural disasters that might happen. So we had food set aside for an emergency. But what we hadn't really thought about was if we're gonna be home and life is gonna kind of continue to go on, we'll have electricity and internet and stuff, what food do we want to actually make it through that so that we aren't miserable for that period of time, but we actually can somewhat enjoy it? Um, and in these sort of situations, when you're looking at boosting morale, food can be one of those things that can make kind of everything just a little bit better. So what I recommend doing is laying out a one week meal plan. I've got an example over here that I'm gonna show. Um, if this is something you think would be useful to have, I can kind of make this more of a PDF or a, an Excel or something, something you could fill out and download. Let me know in the comments below if that would be helpful. I've been thinking about putting something printable like that together, but if you have suggestions about what to include on it or what you would like, go ahead, let me know, and I'll try and put something together and we'll put it out here in the next couple weeks. So this is a pretty straightforward meal plan, not super complicated, but what we did is we just sat down and said, okay, for the next week or for a week, what would we wanna have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks? Don't forget snacks because the kids will not forget the snacks if you have kids 
and they like snacks. They will not let you hear the end of it. So make sure that you've planned that out. We selected one type of food for every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We didn't really include leftovers. I included leftovers for one day. Obviously you can eat leftovers, but I wanted to make sure that we had enough food that if we didn't have leftovers, we wouldn't be missing a meal the next day, that we'd have plenty of food to last us for that whole entire week. You can get a little bit more creative and you could make uh, a different meal plan for every week of the quarantine. Depends on how many weeks you're planning for. Originally, we had a two week quarantine or a two week stay at home order. And I planned for us, if we needed to be quarantined, if someone got it in our family, that that would be two weeks of them quarantining and then likely somebody else would get it and we would add another two weeks. So we originally planned for four weeks of quarantine in our meal planning. For this, we'll probably plan for six to eight weeks of meal planning so that in case somebody got, got COVID right at the tail end of it, we would have an additional to kind of make it through that two week quarantine period. In order to figure out how much food you need, you just take your one week meal plan, you multiply it by however many weeks. If you're doing different meals in every week, it's gonna be a little more complicated. For us, since we just had the same meal plan every week, we just multiplied that by four and then went and looked at what we had in our freezers, in our fridges, in our uh, pantry to figure out what we already had and then went to the store and bought whatever the difference. If you had to go out and buy eight weeks or six weeks or four weeks worth of food, all at once, it's gonna put a big strain on the grocery stores. But if we know that it's happening in January, so you can buy, you know, use one week of food now and buy two weeks next week, and then use one week and buy two weeks, you'll slowly start to add up over the next six, eight weeks to where you need to be for a January lockdown. The other thing that's a little bit nice about this situation is because we have a little bit more lead time, you could utilize coupons and um, some deals and things like that that you wouldn't have time for if it was, hey, you had 24 hours and you just gotta get everything. It's important to also remember that you still gotta store all this food. So don't plan on getting eight weeks of frozen food if you only have a standard side-by-side -side freezer. You're not gonna be able to store everything. So make sure that you're planning your meals, not just for things that you like, but also things that you could actually store the ingredients to make. The second tip is to check your heat source. Since it's winter-ish, I mean, it's not technically winter till the middle of December, but I mean, it feels pretty wintry to those of us who live in states not probably named like Arizona and Texas. It's getting pretty chilly. And if your furnace or your wood stove or your gas fireplace isn't functional, isn't working, that would be a real problem, especially if it's difficult to actually get repair people or it's difficult to get replacement parts because there's a big strain because everyone's trying to do it and there aren't enough people. Just because it checks out now and it works doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work in the future, but at least it lets you know that it's working now. And if you did have a problem with it, you have some time to kind of get an option or get a repair person out. Likely the repair people will be dubbed essential workers and so they'll still be working, but you're gonna have probably fewer people working and more people having problems because everyone's gonna be using their furnaces and wood stove. I would highly recommend that you also go out now and get a space heater or two. Um, they're pretty plentiful, so there's not a real run on them yet. There always is a run on them toward the, the kind of the depth of winter or depth of winter, um, dead of winter, whatever. We'll go with one of those words, um, the, you know, the heart of winter. There are also some of them that are on sale, be it from Costco or Amazon or Home Depot. Uh, there are lots of sales going on right now, especially with Black Friday and the holidays. So you can probably pick a couple up for relatively inexpensive and just have them. They're good in general to have, but in case you do, your main source of heat does go out or have a problem or you run out of fuel, having electric space heaters that you can plug in, hopefully whatever the lockdown is wouldn't produce some sort of an electric grid problem. We're not expecting power outages as a result of that. Could happen for other reasons, but hopefully this wouldn't cause it. You would at least have an alternative to keep yourself warm until you can get somebody out to, to either fix your, your furnace or you can get more firewood or whatever it is that you would need as the, as the, the lockdown is going. Tip number three is go fill up your gas tanks. Uh, we talked about this in the video about 24 hours to disaster. This is another one where just because you know that something might happen, it's good to kind of be in that uh, kind of overly prepared mode where you're just a little bit, your senses are heightened as it relates to preparedness, and you're just kind of thinking about it more top of mind. So in this case, I would recommend if you um, have two cars and you can use one car to drive and keep one car full and just kind of sitting in the driveway, just make sure that you've always got a full tank in at least one car. If you have to use two cars or if you only have one car and that's the one you gotta use, make sure that you keep your gas tank uh, above half 
There are lots of times in life where if you drop below half and you get to a quarter or you're running on E, it's not going to be the end of the world. Life will go on. In this case, we don't expect to run out of gas by any means. But if there is some sort of a lockdown or a shutdown or something, people do tend to panic if they're not watching this channel or other channels like us. And they will run out and try to fill up their gas tanks and buy toilet paper and do what they did in March and over the summer. And what we want to try to do is avoid being in that situation. So if you keep your gas tank above half, then you don't have to worry about it. Gas is plentiful right now, so you don't have to worry about it. But in the meantime, it just kind of hedges so you're not in that kind of, oh, I didn't get a fill up, I knew I should have, and now I've got to wait or I've got to drive across town to go get it. You just have it and you're just ready to go. Number four is go get some cash. So again, this is something that we talked about in the 24 Hours to Disaster video. I'll link it up here. But getting some cash and just having it on hand is really helpful in any sort of uncertainty or disaster. You don't really know. And assuming that the economy doesn't collapse and the economic systems don't collapse, um, which would be a whole different problem and a bigger issue, um, just making sure that you're not necessarily maybe relying on a credit card or a debit card or power or whatever, just having cash available allows you a lot more flexibility if you need to get supplies or if you need to get something or if people aren't, for example, taking credit cards or something like that. Just having some cash at home is really, really a great thing for a security perspective and makes you feel safer. And then in general, if you don't need it, you just deposit it back. It's your money. It's not like it really costs you anything other than, you know, the 0.001% interest or whatever that it would accrue over that month. So take out a little bit, you know, doesn't need to be a lot, you know, doesn't need to be everything you got or anything like that, but just take out some. So in case you needed to buy groceries or you needed to pay for a tank of gas or something like that, you would have money available to do that. And then whatever you don't use, put it back at the end um, and just deposit it back in your account. Number five is refill your prescriptions and refill your over-the-counter medications and first aid stuff. So a lot of people have medications that they use regularly, prescription or otherwise. When everything shut down in March and over the summer, there were huge runs on uh, over-the-counter medications, on first aid stuff. People were just grabbing all kinds of things. So the shelves were pretty bare once you got into the middle of it, and it's taken a little while for the shelves to kind of catch back up again. So if there are things like that, if there are prescriptions that you need, call your doctor, see if you can get an extra month in advance, see if your insurance will cover that, if a, if a pharmacy will fill it for you. If you can't, figure out where there are other pharmacies. If, for example, your pharmacy runs out of your medication because a lot of people are trying to fill it, there may be other pharmacies that have that same medication and you just need to transfer the prescription or you just need to call them or something. Figure out what that process is in your area so you would know how to tackle that if you needed. Also, since we're in winter time and we're gonna be heading into the spring, if you have kids and you need you know, cold medication or allergy medication for them or for yourself, now would be a good time to make sure you've got an extra box or two just set aside. You don't need to go out and empty a shelf, but make sure that you've got some in a closet ready to go in case you need it. Because while everyone is concerned about COVID and, and all of that, it's still possible you get a cold or you get something that just makes you feel not great. And you would want to make sure that you've got whatever medication it is that would make you feel better because there's going to be a lot going on that's going to make you not feel great. You don't need that on top of it. And the sixth thing is prepare for the holidays now. So in a lot of areas, we're not actually going to be able to get together technically and big groups and do the big family holiday celebrations that we wanted, but you are probably going to be able to at least get together with your own immediate family in your house and do that. So if you are planning on doing Thanksgiving at home and you want to have a turkey and that's important to you, maybe go get the turkey now. Go get the turkey, make sure you got it in the freezer because if you, for whatever reason, can't get there or there's a supply chain issue or something, you don't wanna be two days before Thanksgiving really wanting a turkey and you can't get one. Same thing with Christmas dinner and things like that. Anything you can get in advance, whether it's the box packaged goods or whether it's canned goods or anything like that, try to get as much of that in advance just so that there's you're not involved in whatever the rush might be around that period of time. There's always a rush anyway, but you won't be in the exaggerated rush that could transpire. The same goes for any sort of Christmas presents or holiday presents or Hanukkah presents or presents of any kind, birthday presents. Over the next several months, there's going to be a whole lot of people ordering online. There's going to be a whole lot of people trying to kind of make up for the ugly that's going on with exciting things for kids or for their loved ones or whatever. 
So there's gonna be a big strain on your normal retailers and the uh, small businesses that are trying to stay afloat. So try to get as much of that done in advance as you can. I ordered some things on Prime Day. It was supposed to be two day delivery because Prime Day, pretty much everything is two day delivery. And even with two day delivery, it still took a week and a half because FedEx was overwhelmed and UPS was overwhelmed and the postal service was overwhelmed by all of the orders. So likely that will happen again, especially as we get closer into the heart of the shopping season, when we get to actually Black Friday and things like that. I think kind of the instinct and the, the habits of people to start to look at buying things then will happen and it'll be a lot more online and it's going to take a lot more logistical power to do that. And I don't know that that's going to necessarily make sure that whatever you buy is going to get to wherever you want it to be on time. So if you start and you buy it now, even if it goes on sale, lots of companies will do a price match or a price adjustment or something like that. You can call ahead in advance if you're really, really concerned. But if you buy it now, you likely will be able to get some sort of a price adjustment in the future. Just double check before you buy it. But that would be a way to kind of make sure that you're not losing out on a ton of money, but you're making sure that you get the thing in advance and it can get there on time. So it's just not another thing that's kind of getting ruined in the world of 2020 that we live in. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully those six tips were helpful. Hopefully you're able to go out and get some of those things. You're not caught in the panic. You can get enough supplies. Hopefully the supply chains are a little stronger now and kind of prepared for something like this. So you won't see as many interruptions or disruptions, but just in case, hopefully these will help you to kind of smooth out the curve as we're going through the next several weeks and possibly months of this kind of COVID spike, lockdown, quarantine, whatever is gonna happen as we, as we move out of 2020 and enter into 2021. If you think there's something that I missed or something that people should be preparing uh, with or buying or stocking up on, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. The comments are really, really helpful for YouTube, letting people know that we're chatting about the video. And if you wouldn't mind also, if you haven't already, I mean, we talked about it a few minutes ago, but if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe button. That also lets YouTube know that this is a video that they should share with other people, let people know about it. So we really, really appreciate that. The, the channel has seen a lot of great momentum in the last several weeks. And I'd really like to continue that so that more people can see the videos and hopefully get prepared and avoid looking at empty shelves like they may or may not have been doing back in March. So thanks again, really appreciate it. And we will see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Thanks a lot, bye.